In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is for the repose of the soul of Angela and Henry. May they rest in eternal peace. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and won over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derby after they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples. They returned to Lystra and to Conium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perda, they went to Antalya. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse the discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. My mouth speaks the praise of the Lord. May all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead, and so enter into His glory. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. 
If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father, that I do just as the Father had commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I know for a lot of Catholics, one of the scariest words is evangelize or evangelization. Recently, these past days, I heard someone say that evangelizing is scary. And it's scary for a couple of reasons. First, many of us don't think that we know enough. Most of us don't think that we are able to speak and share and explain and and help fight through a lot of the, the, the arguments about God in this world. Many of us are frankly just fearful. Maybe, maybe back then it was maybe easier to share the faith, but now because we live in a world where people are anti-faith, anti-religion, and religion has been pushed to the side, so when you speak to people about religion, they frankly don't care because religion is supposed to be something that you have. It's a personal thing. And so we have a culture also that literally goes against evangelization because they want you to keep your faith to yourself. And I remember when I was at St. Patrick, it's my, my, my second seminary out of the three that I went to. It was about five years ago. And my, my priest fr friend had a couple of friends came, that came up to visit us. And I remember at the time I was so fearful and scared to share and to maybe tell people why even I believe in God. And I remember, you know, she was a, 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 a young musician and she came up also to play at the seminary. And I remember we went to go get pizza. And there was just, just this, this waiter that was kind of wa waiting on us to give us food. And all of a sudden she looks at him and she just says, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And I, I, that was so courageous. It was so bold. It was, it was up north in, in the San Jose area, Menlo Park area. And then she just had conversations with this guy about Jesus Christ. I mean, she was speaking from a personal conviction because she believed in God. And that even though if this guy said, go away, you're crazy that she would be okay with that because she was just sharing how her life was changed by God. Why do I tell you this? Because a lot of times I think evangelization is not what we think. Yes, it's about sharing your faith, it's about using words, but I think most especially first, it's about your life. It's your example, it's how you live. People will not listen to you until they see that your life is ordered with God, that you are who you say you are, that you, you preach, you practice what you preach. You see, in the Acts of the Apostles, we also have moments when maybe evangelization doesn't, things got messy in the Acts of the Apostles. So when these disciples were sent out by Jesus, it wasn't all easy. You know, we have this imagine, we imagine that when we go preach to people, we tell people about Jesus, automatically they'll listen to us and they'll convert and then, and it'll be very, very easy. But most often it's not. You see, when Paul, when St. Paul was evangelizing people, he was speaking from a true place that he went from persecuting Jews to believing, I mean, persecuting Christians, he went from persecuting Christians to believing in what the Christians were saying. But there was a moment in Acts of the Apostles where the people that St. Paul preached to, there was another group of people outside who were against St. Paul. They were also preaching to the people. And it seemed like in the Acts of the Apostles that these people were turning away from what St. Paul was saying and they were beginning to believe what the other people were saying. So it seems like St. Paul was failing, right? There's a moment in Acts of the Apostles when St. Paul was stoned, stoned. Remember St. Stephen, how he died, the first martyr? St. Paul in the Acts of the Apostles was, was stoned. 
people thought he was dead, but then he was not. And But what did he do in the Acts? He just kept traveling, traveling, traveling. Even when it seems like he was failing, he still went out. Because St. Paul knew that even though there was maybe some fear, some worry, he was not afraid because it was God's power. But that even when St. Paul, even when his words weren't the most eloquent, or maybe when he didn't know what to say, or maybe when he was just furious and angry, wasn't sure what to do, it was still the Holy Spirit that was in charge. That's the thing about evangelization. We all have our personalities. We all have our ways. Some of us are more loud than others. Some of us are more quiet. Some of us are more fearful. Some of us just go out there like my friend, like five years ago, that's what she does. She's not afraid. But there are those of us who just have those personalities where it's more difficult. But this is why our example, the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and to know that these disciples, they weren't the smartest people. They weren't the most learned. And when you know that, that evangeliz- evangelizing is less about how much you know than about how much you love God, that's the key difference. But to know that there are moments when we evangelize and we think that we fail. We think that all is lost, all is gone, especially during these times when we're doing our best to maybe guide our families, to guide our friends, to guide those people who don't believe. And we think that we're failing, but we're not. Because God often works in our weakness to show us how strong he is. And so I want to to read to you this, this part of the Acts of the Apostles that I think will give us encouragement So imagine, this is the two things that happened. Other people came and won over the people that St. Paul was trying to help convert, to help guide. Secondly, St. Paul was stoned. Those two things, I think, would discourage many of us. But not St. Paul. He got up and he kept traveling. And this is what he said. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and encouraged them to persevere in faith saying it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. It's not easy to follow God. It is not easy to keep the faith. And I recently was praying this morning and I I read this part in scripture where it said that seek the narrow way. The narrow road leads to life. And I think many of us, we are striving to pray, struggling to love our families, to be faithful to God, and it's very difficult. And many times as Christians, we find ourselves wondering, why is it so hard? But when we remember those words that the the way to God is, it's not an easy path, it is a narrow way. And I like to think that that narrow way explains the difficulty and the challenges that Jesus himself went the narrow way that his disciples went the narrow way, that the saints went the narrow way. And when we remember that our life is about, about, our life is about, our life is about giving it away. When we remember that, I think things get easier. Not that our sufferings will go away, but that we will know that this is the right path. And we keep moving forward, that even when we fail, when we fall, when we are scared, when we are worried, we know that we are being moved by the Spirit. And when we are moved by the Spirit, we don't have to worry about the future because God has us. So let us follow the example of St. Paul and just keep moving forward and trust that God has us and that God has our future in His hands. moment we gather up all our intentions and we present them to the Heavenly Father. We pray for all our world leaders that they may have the wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an end of this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for all our health care workers and all those in the front lines. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for the opening of our churches and for 
the Pope and for all the priests and all those consecrated to religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Pray for all those who have died from this virus and all the souls in purgatory. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the tensions and the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we gather up all these enchanters at this moment and we present them to you in your Son's name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For through the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For through the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who restore, receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But then it's time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church brought throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with France, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Assistant Bishops Timothy and Tom, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we have merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the spiritual communion prayer at this moment. Let us pray. O good kindness upon your people, o Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.